can... let's talk about pagan parenting. Okay, well, I'm going to tell you, I've got a 16-year-old daughter and a 12-year-old son. Um, and like I said, the wife and I decided we were not going to raise them as little witches. Um, so I heard what was said last week about the whole Did they ever thing. want to be witches for Halloween? Um, actually, once. Uh, uh, my daughter my daughter did it, and they usually had really weird stuff. They wanted to be uh, killer plants and all kinds of other uh, bizarre stuff. But I think the, the thing was that... Like I said, we wanted to teach them to be able to be like straight thinking. And of course, you know, we had a lot of issues with, you know, we knew that there was no way that you're going to have a, tell a kid who's like three or four years old, don't tell grandma that we're witches. Right. We were, um, my wife was out to her family, but my family was still a little uncomfortable with the whole concept. So we said, you know, we can't putting really, it, that's putting yeah, it mildly. Yeah, that's kind yeah, of putting it mildly. So the thing is, you know, you can't expect a, a kid not to say something like that. I mean, they're going to come up with all sorts of interesting little stories. And, you know, at school, we knew it was going to come up at school and somebody was going to say something. And then the teachers were going to be like, oh, because, you know, I have friends who are teachers. I hear all the stories. Like, and little Johnny came in today and said, you know, mom came home from pole dancing last night. And, you know, I mean, they, they, they don't have secrets. They don't understand that, you know, we just don't talk about stuff like that. So we just said, you know, we can't do anything that we're not really willing to have, you know, be public knowledge. I think that was a good way. No, it would like, be like, like yeah. not doing anything you aren't willing to put on Facebook or something like yeah. that. And, you know, and so ultimately we had a few open rituals here and there with our group and we'd bring the kids in there. And like I said, it was something that other people had brought children to. I remember one time my daughter sitting and deciding that all of a sudden she was going to transform herself into a cat. And for the whole ritual, she sat and groomed herself with her hands and licked her leg for like an hour and when people looked at it's like she's a cat okay so it's just there i mean that was her she was you know she didn't really get the whole thing going on we actually in our in our coven we had a um we had a kids class where every um holiday we had a little celebration and we would right. talk to them about the holiday right. not so much as an indoctrination but like this is what your parents believe and this is right. you know kind of there and let's go dance around a maypole and we don't tell them what the maypole represents when they're seven or eight we just say it's a fun dance and you dance around the maypole so but I was talking to my daughter um, a couple of days ago. I said, do you remember those classes? She said, yeah, we used to go out back and, and catch frogs in the pond. And, and I said, well, do you remember anything else about the classes? And yeah, it was pretty much it's like, well, once we had a dumb supper, but I don't remember why we had to be dumb. And it's like, okay. And so, I mean, yeah, that was about probably the same thing that most kids yeah. memorize from yeah. Sunday school, to be very honest. Yeah. So, I mean, I think we were good there. But they've always been open to metaphysical stuff. I mean, they both decided about, we had this really cool book I started reading to my daughter when she was about four. It was called In the Beginning, and it had 120 different yes, yes. creation myths. I had that one too. And every night we read that, and yeah. they got to decide huh. what they wanted to you know, to look at. It's like right. for them, the idea of being made out of dirt and mud, like it said in the Old Testament, wasn't as exciting as being like licked out of an ice floe by a cow. You know, it's like, so I mean, it's yeah, like, yeah, well, all these people, yeah, you know, cow. had had a lot of different things. So... Um, they also, you know, they would ask a lot of questions and I never answered with a definitive answer. Like, you know, what you all, what, what is this? Or where did we come from? It's like, I would always give them the, well, some people believe this and some people believe that. And ultimately some people think there was this huge explosion and we all evolved. It's like everybody, you know, someday you're going to be able to look at all these things and decide. And, you know, I'm one of those kind of probably odd religious people is that I'm a firm believer in evolution. I think that as we evolved, our religions and our ideals evolved along with us. I mean, I really am not a fan of being made out of mud or licked out of an ice floe. Um, I don't see that there's a problem with religion existing alongside. I'm not even alongside. going with the whole licked yeah. out of the ice floe thing. Yeah, it's like, so it's like, you know, it's just one of those things that, um, for me, I mean, I just wanted to teach them to be able to think logically, to think about things and how it affected people. I think the biggest thing we heard from people, it's like, how are you going to teach them to be good without religion? And I have to admit, for me, it was coercion. I was raised, if you do that, you're going to hell. If you do that, you make baby Jesus cry. You know, if you do that, you know, you're letting the devil in. I mean, I was, the, I was grew up in one of those churches where the devil was in everything from every 45 record and records for those of you who were these little black things that came a long time before CDs. You know, everything is like the devil was everywhere. And so we were terrified and lived in terror. Mm -hmm. And we had the idea, like, how are we going to talk to our children about what's right and wrong? Right. And so the ultimate thing was, basically, we said, we're going to go with the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. It's an old, much older than the Bible. It's been around for a long time. And really and truly, we'd make Actually, them... Actually, I think it's Egyptian. Yeah, it, it goes in. It shows up in some of the in Mesopotamian stuff and everything. It shows up in various forms. So, I mean, ultimately, it comes down to 
We just had them say, okay, you just did this. You told a fib or a lie. How do you think that would feel if someone told a fib or a lie about you? And we would talk about it and go through that. I mean, morality doesn't have to be based on punishment or, you know, no. what are we going to say? It's like, oh, you're going to make the fairies upset if you do that. Or, you know, karma's going to get you in your next life. You're going to be a frog. You know, and that's just not what I wanted to do to my children. I wanted them to think about how they had to treat their brothers and sisters on this planet and how they wanted to be treated. And unfortunately, the you know, it came down to the really unfortunate thing is my son would come home from school crying. It's like, well, I treated Tommy this way, but he didn't treat me back. It's like, no, that's the way the whole rule works. And you treat people as you want to be treated, but that doesn't always guarantee they're going to treat you back. And that whole unfairness thing was a really difficult thing. You know, when I was growing up, we were taught the unfairness was, well, these people are sinners. And they're going to do sins and later they'll get punished in hell and you get to dance and laugh as they get thrown into the pit. And so that'll be your reward. No, it's like sometimes Ew. people choose Ew. to people choose to do bad things, and you know sometimes just living a, a miserable life from doing the bad things is their punishment. You know, it's not it's not that anybody's going to strike them down, and we just have to wait for that right time. Darn. So, yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> so I mean, the bottom line was just trying to raise them in that way. But I mean, my daughter from early on saw things saw things that were there. I mean, we have house guardians, and she would sometimes. Um, go over and be babbling away at age two to where our front door guardian was and she you know she would sit there and have long discussions with you know the being she saw things that moved through you know and, and were outside I can remember yeah I can remember one time we were up at a camping trip and a whole bunch of us were out and it was a full moon and we wanted to see the moon and we were out at a lake and the moon was completely cloud covered and so we went out we were all holding hands we all began singing we all come from the goddess and about two verses into it, this hole just appeared in the clouds right over the moon and just like stripped away, still perfectly cloudy everywhere except over the moon. And afterwards, um, we ta were talking to her and she said, did you see the lady? And I said, well, we were thought she was just talking about the moon. It's like, yes, the lady, you know, the clouds cleared. And then when we quit singing, it went back. She goes, no, I saw her face. And to this day at 16, she still swears that when she was three years old, she saw the goddess looking at her from the clouds. But that was her image. We didn't tell her, look, honey, there's the goddess looking down at you. She, right. you know, she began telling stories when she was about four about her forest grandfather, about this bizarre man that she would go visit at night who had antlers and he had a pack of dogs. I think it was Kernuno? I Well, I mean, my, my patron deity is, you know, Hern Kernuno's uh, Aron, but I never talked about this to her. She never saw these, but she would tell these stories about his big dogs and how much. I remember at age four, she said, Dad, I want to go deer hunting. And I said, what? Because we don't really hunt. I don't have anything against hunting, but we, you know, we live in, you know, in in a city, and it's like, well, we could go out and throw rocks at squirrels if we had to, but that's about it. And it's like, you really want to go deer hunting? And she goes, yes. Forest grandfather goes all the time, and he said he could take me. And it's like, okay. But I said, Ooh. you really want to go out and shoot Bambi? Because she's four, and she's yeah. like, Dad, Bambi's a cartoon deer. I want to hunt real deer. Woo! So, I mean, so when we talked about that, and I actually was gonna set it up, and then she kind of got off into something else. But I mean. You know, we just, we let those things kind of flow through. And like I said, you know, both of them, um, my son read the Percy Jackson novels. He's just, he set up a shrine in his room by himself to Zeus. And he's got another one by his fish tank to Poseidon. And he has another one, I think the Zeus thing is by his bird and Poseidon is by his fish. And he has a, a temple, a little temple to Hades somewhere. And I can't remember where, the, where he put that in his room. But he decided that the, the whole triad of the, the you, know, you know, that it should be. Yeah, it's like, so, I mean, ultimately, he decided that on his own. And it's like, you know, well, if that's, you know, how you feel about it. But, I mean, both of them have had problems. Um, you know, they, I remember him coming home from school in first grade saying, why am I going to hell? And it's like, okay, what happened with that? And it's like, well, one of the boys at school asked me if I, what church I went to. And I told him we didn't go to church. He said, well, then you're going to hell. So then I had to explain what hell was you know, why he wasn't going there and, you know, people could choose to believe that, but that he didn't have to accept it just because somebody else told him that's where he was going. Same way when my daughter was about five, we got the movie, um, uh, Prince of Egypt. You remember that that mm -hmm. was a Steven Spielberg movie and you know, we right. figured she's watched Hercules. She's watched all the other myths. Why right. not, you know, see right. this too. Right. So we're watching Prince of Egypt and there's some pretty cheesy songs and, you know, the animation wasn't that bad, but then they got to the part where, God sent down the plague and killed all the firstborn. And she right. began crying. Yeah. She's like, why did their God kill those babies? And I picked the phone up and dialed her grandmother and said, ask grandma. Because that was always the one that got me when I was a kid too. It's like, I was, I was raised reading the Bible over and over again. And I asked my minister, why would God kill a bunch of children to make a point? Mm -hmm. And I could, I didn't have a good answer. So I said, you, have, you ask grandma and have her tell you because this one's out of my ballywick. Because in, but it was interesting. Even at age five, she's like, why did their God? It wasn't, why did God, why God, did whatever? It's like, yeah. why did their God do this? Yeah. Um, 
And, you know, I had the same thing when somebody would ask about, you know, having a four year old and about parents and stuff. My daughter um, joined Girl Scouts when she was in kindergarten and I was I was a volunteer as well. And I actually we're still really involved in Girl Scouts. And yeah, um, cookies coming. Cookies are coming tomorrow. And uh, uh, so the girls will be knocking on the doors. Oh, thin mints, thin mints. I'll bring somebody next time. All right. Um, so, I mean, the bottom line is that you're dealing with. I went over to the to the house and they had crosses on the wall and stuff. I was a little bit nervous. And then I found out that she was a, a Lutheran um, or Episcopalian lay minister. And I was like, oh my gosh. And it's like, we better be careful about this because there's a lot of stuff about deity and stuff. So when we were in second grade, I was pretty close about keeping it in the closet and didn't want to like, you know, ruin her Girl Scout experience. I was out with this wonderful woman and we were talking about our children. And she said, you know, that she used to be terrified of sudden infant death syndrome and that she would get up five or six times at night and go look at her right. child. Right. And then she said, one night I just said, if God wants my child, she'll take her. And I went, what did she you know? just say? So I said, you just used a feminine pronoun. She goes, yeah, she goes, I don't think God is a man or woman. God is just out there. It's the divine. And so then we started talking and I wasn't really educated about Episcopalians. We were told when I grew up that Episcopalians were just Protestant Catholics and to stay away from them because that was my church believed that everybody but our church was going to hell. So it was good. Heaven was going to be I, I like think, 45 people, you I know. Think a lot of, <laughs> so but don't you think a lot of a lot of the new religions believe yeah, that it's, it's, it's our like, way know, or the highway? Yeah, and that was it. It's like we were so I never knew about it. So I started talking to her and going, wow, this is really cool. And this lady when I told her, I, I broke the news. It's like, well, just in case Rowan says anything, you know, we're, you know, we're um, pagans. And she's like, oh, that's cool. And so we've had her over multiple times yeah. to come. She's come to rituals nice. with us. And nice. my daughter has gone to her church and, and experienced that. And, you know, they've gone back and forth. And we've been able to have a lot of really cool connection with that. She's come and, you know, and um, even had us do some prayer work when she was um, one of the people, you know, she was working on getting... Um, having a baby and she has her church pray for her and we gave her a statue of boss to keep with her to you know to watch over her during her pregnancy so I mean that was one of those times when I had been afraid of, of prejudice and it didn't happen in fact I was given an amazing amount of acceptance that I just didn't expect um, my daughter is in high school now and she said that she has some uh, friends who are really negative about paganism or Wicca and that some of her other friends who are you know experimenting and trying to kind of pretend to be that way um you know they get people make fun of them and and say negative things about them and stuff and you know she's just pretty much she doesn't really consider herself anything her basic feeling is she doesn't know enough to make a decision yet mm. and to be very honest i mean we live a long time i mean you have a plenty of time i think to become something and decide what you want to be and mm -hmm. you know somebody asked about you know age of when you would teach a person you know, Wicca or whatever, and they said 18, and I think I would probably agree with that at that point. You didn't have to worry about causing, you know, parents consternation or anything like that. And so as far as teaching them basic paganism about what the holidays are about, you know, I would say go for it. I mean, it's wonderful to know, and that way they can go and tell their friends where the Easter Bunny really came from, you know, and uh, have lots of fun with that. But as far as teaching oh, magic yeah. and stuff, I, I'm not really sure where I feel on that. I mean, I'm not really sure that kids that age really have the willpower or anything to be learning magic. I mean, I have I swear I've gone to fake pagan festivals where some lady will come up and say, this is little Morgana, and she's already a second-degree witch at nine years old, and she has yeah. her play school with Tommy. And it's like, oh, my God. You know, it's like I just I really think that, you know, for me, when I'm looking for a student, I look for a certain amount of maturity. I look for a certain amount of willpower, and most nine- or ten-year-olds really don't have either of those. And to be very honest, they may want to, you know, to pretend along with us and to come to rituals and stuff, but they're not ready to join a coven right. or anything at that age, you know. No, I, and I agree. And, and certainly in magical work, I think it's a very common thing to put in, if you want to call them spells, um, to put in, as I will, mm -hmm. so must it be. And I don't think at nine... Yeah, that they don't know what will is yet. Don't know what will is. All right, well, it looks so. like we've had lots of fun here tonight, right. and uh, we'll have lots of questions, and... Um, We'll seeing uh, seeing what we can do for there, but I guess it's about time for us to. I think it is. To yeah. Sing happy trails here. I think I've had a lot of fun. Yeah, good. All right, we hope you have too. Please join us again next Tuesday, and um, hopefully we'll be talking about pagans and the law. Um, so, blessed be. Blessed be.